Good evening, everyone. Hi, I'm McKenna from Murder by the Book in Houston, Texas. And tonight I am so, so excited uh, to bring you a special treat. We got this set up last minute, but I know there are many of you out there who are very excited about this. Um, I have been a Carrie Greenwood fan since just about I, when I started at the bookstore. Um, I was just talking with Carrie and I have the little bitty original um, uh, U.S. mass markets of the first books and um, have imported the U.S. edition, uh, excuse me, the Australian editions for years for myself. And I'm so excited, not only that we get to speak with Carrie for a, an abbreviated um, time tonight, but also that there is in fact a new uh, Franny Fisher book out, Death in Dalesford. I've already put a link in the comments. If you want to order it, we have the book in stock in hardcover and in paperback. Please um, consider ordering it from us or a local independent bookstore. Um, but it's 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 wonderful. I love all of her books. Many of you know the TV show, the wonderful uh, Miss Fisher's Mysteries, and I can just tell you the books are even better. So uh, before we get to Carrie, I do want to mention um, on Thursday night, we'll be back here uh, with David Class and David Baldacci. Um, we haven't had David Baldacci for a virtual event yet during this um, time of all of these virtual events. So that's going to be kind of um, a new author and something that's a treat. And then we have a special event next week on Wednesday night. Um, it's going to be completely different. Um, I know a lot of you have watched these regularly, and we're actually having um, a new guest interviewer join our crew. There will be more information about that to come, but um, we're doing an event with just me, John, and um, this new um, person, Sarah Devello, who is a wonderful interviewer and is going to be taking part in um, our events going forward. So um, we're doing basically a virtual event behind the scenes Q&A, ask us what you've always wanted to ask us about putting on events, how we get authors, what we do, how we interview. Um, and it's really just to introduce all of you to Sarah also. So that's next Wednesday and um, we're really, really looking forward to it. And I think that um, it should be a fun time with you asking us kind of the inside baseball uh, part of this. Okay, so the star of the show tonight is Carrie Greenwood. Let me bring her on. Hello yes. again, Carrie. Hi. So, so excited to see you. Um, many of the people watching obviously know who you are, but I'm going to do a formal introduction anyway, as I always do. Carrie Greenwood was born in the Melbourne suburb of Footscray, and after wandering far and wide, she returns to live there. She has degrees in English and law from Melbourne University and was admitted to the legal profession on the 1st of April, 1982, a day which she finds both soothing and significant. Carrie has written three series, a number of plays, including The Troubadours with Stephen Darcy, uh, an award-winning children's writer, and has edited and con contributed to several anthologies. The Franny Fisher series began in 1989 with Cocaine Blues, which was a great success. Carrie has written 20 books in this series with no sign of Miss Fisher hanging up her pearl-handled pistol. Carrie says that as long as people want to read them, she can keep writing them. In 2003, Carrie won the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Australian Association. And as I will say again, Death in Dalesford is the new book. Now, I paid a, I paid Carrie my greatest compliment as a, a avid reader and bookseller um, when we just got online, which is to say that I have not read this new book yet, only because I have put back the latest three or four of her books because I always want to know that I have a Franny Fisher book waiting on a bad day when I need frightening. So um, I actually haven't read this. I'm going to be a poor interviewer today. I'm not gonna be specific about this book because I have just back pocketed so many of hers, but I do have my original Australian two-in-one import edition here that um, started it years and years ago. We used to bring these in to get people hooked on the Carrie Greenwood books and um, now Poison Pen Press, of course, does them and we're so glad that there's wide distribution here. So, okay, I'm going to shut up. I want Carrie to tell me about this book. Why don't you tell us about this book in your own words and where we find Miss Fisher? Well, here is about Franny. Here she is and she looks beautiful. She as does. She yeah, they did a very pretty thing. I'm very pleased with it. And it's about Franny and she's taking up to the hundred of a nice day and she, 
didn't look anything surprising happening. And all of a sudden, the really surprising things happened. So it all happened, so to speak. And no one was more surprised than I was because you never know with Granny. She just wanders around, looks beautiful, and then things happen. They sure do. And um, she also has quite the cast of characters who um, continually help her with her, her predicaments. That's one, of my, that's one of my favorite things about um, the series. So I, I failed to mention, for those of you who are watching, we're going to do a little bit of an abbreviated talk tonight. We're going to, um, I'm going to talk to Carrie for about 15 minutes, and then we're going to have about 15 minutes for questions. So get your questions in soon. I know that they exist, um, and I will be uh, chatting with her in the meanwhile. So um, I'm so, so glad that there's a new one of these. I, the inevitable question is, will we see another one in the future? I promise. Yes, yes. yay. Excellent. As you want it, I shall do it. I Excellent. love, love Franny. She's so beautiful. She's so surprising. She does things. And I have no idea what's going to happen. I just write fast to find out what's going to happen. <laughs> Excellent. So you don't plot all these out. You just you just know Franny and you just write and see where she where she goes. Exactly. Yes. I find out. I know the place. What we're going to look at and the place and the things and the people and all that sort of stuff. Once Franny's doing it, I just read fast. <laughs> Excellent. Um, well, you've created such a vivid character that I think we all feel like um, we know her and we know her world. Uh, to the extent for me that when I started watching the series, at first I was like, I don't know that she's Friday. But then, of course, I was won over by the end of the first episode. Um, she's, she's yeah. yeah, she was absolutely beautiful. Do you want to talk a little bit about the t TV series and how that process went? Well, it was surprising because I didn't want to do it for a lot because I couldn't find anyone that would be willing to do it properly. And then I found the two ladies, which are naturally ladies, um, and they had read all the books, they'd done all sorts of stuff, they'd paid a huge amount of work, they'd read all of the books. And then, um, so I liked them, and they were good girls, very, very good girls. And that means I agreed and Ever since that they've done it, they do beautifully. They do wonderful stuff. And I love that it's very accurate because the whole thing about um, accurate place, uh, it has to be right or I won't be able to write it. I can't do it until I know where it is and where it's going and what's going to happen. Not the, the pit, not Friday, but the place. So they get the place and they do everything. I think they do terribly well. They do do terribly well, and they, I mean, they're just so beautiful. I'm actually so envious of the people who live in Australia and co can go see the costume exhibits because when I heard they were doing those, I thought, oh, my God, that must be incredible. Oh, um, the clothes are superb. They really are because I was thinking about it with my mother, I was, who was, my mother was very good at beautiful clothes, and I've been doing it as I'm writing it. I was asking my mother you know, what sort of book is Franny going to have? You know? And then when the the um, other people, the ladies are doing it, they have the most beautiful clothes. I love it. And you would like, oh, which unfortunately you can't, but never mind. But if you ever see it, you'll find it. The clothes are superb. Yeah. They really are. Some yeah. of the ones that you think, I want several. <laughs> I want all of them. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There are some where she just walks into a room and it's just, it stops you dead. You just think, oh my gosh, the whole, the whole ensemble is just so incredible. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So you also, obviously you write um, Corinna Chapman and you've written some other books. Um, why? Uh, so which do you enjoy more or is it just kind of picking between children, the contemporary Corinna, Corinna Chapman's or uh, Franny in 1920s oh. Melbourne? I like both of them. I particularly like Franny because she's so stylish and she's so beautiful. And she never makes, she makes, never makes any, no mistake, she never makes a mistake. Whereas um, Corinna is more real and it's a really kind of thing. So I like both of them. Yeah. I've just finished, nearly finished with you, Corinna. 
Oh, wonderful. Almost feeling finished. And then wonderful. I've got another Friday. I'll do another Friday, naturally, because I like writing books. I do too. I, I, I'm, and I'm glad to hear that both of them are coming back. But that's for the same reason. I like Corinna Chapman. She seems more like someone you would meet next door. Whereas Friday Fisher is the person I want to be. I think, I think a lot of us read the Friday Fisher books and think, I wish we could be Friday Fisher. <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't? Who wouldn't want to be Franny Fisher? I know she's so stylish. Yeah, she's just, she's just wonderful. So I want to talk to you a little bit about mystery because. You've written some other books, but um, did you grow up reading mysteries? Have you always been drawn to mysteries? Um, where yes. did that come from? Always, ever since I was a child. I love surprise, all sorts of surprise. And so I read everything um, and then I find everything else. Too. Yeah, one of my comic is coming soon. Um, in Dorothy Sayers, yes. Oh, yes. She's my best. She's wonderful. What a woman. I yes. love this stuff. And then when I started writing it when I was a child, I was writing them there. So I almost do. I just like stories. And so the, particularly with the idea that you can change it, fix it, and alter it. But it's still got to be a good story. Right. Right. Absolutely. Um, so also was it an intentional decision in the Friday books to make so many of the characters so progressive and to represent such strong women at the time was that intentional or was it just the women that you felt needed to be in the book it worked like that it just sort of did it sorry it's not making sense but it does no but I, particularly because of the time after the war the period um there are a lot more women doing things because there were so many young men that were dead so it it sort of worked sorry that's about this no no that's fine that's fine i mean it i'm sure there's something organic about the process of course um and i feel like there's just um magic within these books and the world you've created and all the peripheral characters um i mean i love i love dot i love the early books where you're you're making um a family for Friday that is not, you know, blood relatives. That's one of my favorite ways to, des to describe the book are, are that all those characters feel like such a family and there's this sense of family support in them too. Um, so were any of those characters drawn on people in real life that you knew or? Yes. Um, my mother was like top, top. She's going to, she really was like my mother. My, I adored my mother. She was absolutely wonderful. And when I was thinking about what is Franny going to do, I will find out, poor Pot, she's going to have to deal with all the other things that's going to go wrong. And so, and I loved all of them. I like all the people. Yeah. I really yeah. love them. Yeah, it must be like um, just visiting with the family when you go back to one of these books. Exactly so. Yeah. I will go and find what everybody's doing things. I haven't seen them for days. <laughs> That's wonderful. I always ask authors, I find this interesting, do you ever dream about your characters? Always. Yeah, yeah. always. Yeah, yeah. Usually it's particularly at the start. I'm thinking about I'm thinking about it and walking around and doing things. But when I went to sleep, I've suddenly found out where we are and what we're gonna do. And I, I get it very clearly. So that means it's going to be a story. And I wake up thinking, oh no, it's a story. I should be so tired. But I'm going to do it. That's great. That's wonderful. Um, I'm actually going to, we do have some questions. I'm going to answer some, uh, pull some questions and then. If you know, I have others in a little bit, but let me make sure we get to the people who are watching. Um, so someone already said, "Will there be another Corinna Chapman soon?" We already we've covered that. Um, will there be another TV movie? The recent one was such a treat. Oh, I hope so, but uh, that's not for me. That's over the ladies, and I shall find out how it goes. But I love, it. I love it. Yeah, I um, I know they did like, the the Kickstarter campaign for that or whatever it was, um, and I I donated. I have my tote and things from that, <laughs> so I I too was happy to see that TV movie. Um, let's see, 
Um, this one, I think, it sounds like you love the series also, but do you like the TV series as much as we do? Yes, I do. I think it's terrific. I was, uh, I was, the ladies are so clever and what they're doing is so intelligent and they always talk to me. So they always talk to me about it. So there's none of this stuff about taking out so it'll be changed or altered or anything like that. I never anything. I find it, I see it and I love it. So a lot of the early episodes were very strictly based on books, but then they've they've written new screenplays, correct? Just with the characters? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Yeah. But they're good. They're very excellent. Yeah. I always get to see them. Yeah, there it's it's it feels seamless. You can't really tell which ones were based on your material and which ones were inspired by your material, which is which is amazing. I think uh, yeah. Uh, so let's see, here's a, another question. What kind of research and how much research do you do before you launch Franny into her adventure? Oh, a huge amount. I do the find, I look, I walk around, I find it everywhere, I do all the work. I always do that first before that's, so I'm still thinking about Franny, but then I'm doing all the work to make sure it's absolutely right, because if it isn't right, I can't do it and so I do it and I do a lot of work and I'm going to do Williamstown um, this place which is what I'm going to do for the next Friday and I've got to wander around and look at everything and look at the chips and do everything I can possibly do first and then I've got a Friday. Well at this point I would imagine too like you have a knowledge base of the time period you know you're not you're not just diving into 1920s without having an idea of, of what Franny does, what Franny wears. Like you you know that world. So for each book, it's more just um, specifically to the location and that case, right? That's right. Exactly so. Um, so the same person asks, what made you cho choose the Hispano Suiza? It's beautiful. <laughs> there, were three, there were three ones I was thinking about. But I absolutely love that one. It's so beautiful. I love it. It's got the pretty thing. And it's got, it is stylish. It's beautiful. It's black. It, it's um, red. And I saw it. And when I saw it, I thought, I love that one. I just love it. But that's Franny's car. Yes. <laughs> yes. Excellent. Okay. Another question here. You were a lawyer before. Have you worked on cases that made it into your books? No, I haven't because I was doing hard work. I was looking after all the poor little lost darlings, the poor little black dogs. I did most, I was doing, um, what's the word, Justin? I was here. Yeah, I think in English. Public defender. Yeah, I was. You yeah, mentioned. Sorry, public defender is what you call it in America. Got it. Yeah. Yep, so I looked after the lost. Right. And the, right. And the dumb and the stupid and the lost. And they're just sad. And sad and horrible and bad little rat bags. And so I don't um for Farina for for because it's that's what I did. I was looking after everybody, that's what I did. And so it seems like I shouldn't be stealing them. I, I will write a story. I will write um, a story for it, but I haven't done it yet. Fair enough. Well, it could be argued that, you know, Friday kind of does some of that work too, looking after the poor and the people who have been trod upon, but it's just not the specific cases. That's true. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so you talked about how your mother was an inspiration for Dot. We have a question here from Gail. Was Friday inspired by anyone? My sister, my sister Janet, was utterly beautiful. She was my sister, um, younger sister. She was so beautiful and she wore such beautiful clothes. And so I sort of kind of borrowed her. But luckily she doesn't like. She's fine. I mean, that I, I would I would love for anyone to compare me to Franny Fisher, so I'm sure she I'm sure she doesn't mind. That's a, a quite high praise. Um when writing the new book, did you consider what had happened in the series? A good point. Uh, no. I just passed 
I make the story, but the story is already good. I already know what's going to happen to the previous ones. So I just pay attention and just watch it and see what happens. I'm always surprised. When it <laughs> okay. Um, so if um, there, we do have a couple more questions. Put, put, put more questions in here. I'm going to do a couple of mine for a minute. Um, so do you have a favorite motive to write about or explore? Not particularly. I don't know, darling. Why? What do you mean? Like um, lust or um, <laughs> finance, financial drama or uh, hidden secrets or yes, is there anything yes. that you find that you explore more often? Surprises. We always make surprises. It's always something that Franny can find out, but it's always something unusual. I like that when I write it. It's got to be strange. Yeah. Um, here is this question. Uh, she loves how you brought a love of Sherlock Holmes to murder and Mendelssohn. Is there another detective story you're inspired by? We, uh, talk, we talked about Dorothy Sayers already. Yeah, it's about that, right. No, nothing particularly, darling. I just like when I've got nothing to do anything else, I read a book. And so, funnily enough, and um, I like a lot of, of people. But nobody in particular does. Okay. Um, this is a great question. What do you think about Peregrine Fisher and the 1920s spin-off series? It's superb. I just saw their first one, and it looks really good. And it's definitely different. It's really different, but it's quite close around Franny, Franny's story is still there. And I think it's really good. And I think it will be really good. I really like it. And I was asked about it too. Oh, good, good. It oh, sounds like everyone's been very respectful of you as the creator. Which is very kind of me. Thank you. <laughs> um, okay. I'm going to do a few things. Um, sometimes when I am speaking with authors one-on-one, -on -one, I ask questions from the Proust questionnaire, which um, was developed by Marcel Proust, for those of you watching and don't know. And it was this uh, group of questions that would be asked at cocktail parties and dinners in the late 1800s to get to know someone. So I'm just going to give you a few questions from the Proust questionnaire. So um, who would you consider your hero of fiction that's not Franny Fisher? Mm, that's good, yeah. Uh, go. Oh, Judge D, perhaps. Yes. Oh, yeah. Judge D, great. I adore him. Yeah, those are the um, Robert Van Hewlett books, right? Yes. He's fantastic. Yeah. I love oh. his stuff. I adore him. And, and it's it's so different. Very, very Chinese. But also, it's so surprising. It is good. It's really, it's always great. And I always read it when I can't do, can't think of anything. So I'm going to read the book. That's one of the books. I love him. I'm so, you've seen it. You've seen it. Yes. yes. Oh, I'm so impressed. Yeah. Um, okay. What is your, so I always qualify this by saying it's nothing living. What is your most prized possession? A thing. A thing. So not a cat or a child. <laughs> <laughs> Is it your book kimono? Yep. It's beautiful. Was that made for you? Yes. It was made for my friend. And it's every time I write something, I put another present. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. That's great. Great answer. See, I love asking that question because it's always, it's always surprising. It's, um, it's, it's great. Um, okay. So we have another question. Um, how would you like Franny's story to end? It won't. She never will. Never. She will always be. Franny adventuring. Yes, forever. That's that's the best that's the best possible answer. That's great. That's true. There's, yes. 
no Reichenbach Falls moment coming. No, no, no. Oh, definitely not. No. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. I was going to have to keep you on here and have a stern talking to you if that was going to be the case. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Okay. Another one of my Proust questionnaire questions. Um, so uh, what is your idea of perfect happiness? I have a warm fire. I have a cat, several cats. David, who is gorgeous. He is. He's just gorgeous. He's absolutely lovely. And I have books and I'm thinking about writing another one. That Wonderful. and of course a drink or something. That would be nice. I would like that. That's what I'm gonna have as soon as I lean over and and sit down in my house. That's how I'm going to be. I'm happy. I really am <laughs> That's wonderful. That's great. That's and and given the amount of happiness that you've provided us with these books, that's that's all I would that's all I would expect is that you'd be happy. That's great. Um, oh, well, yeah. we have a follow up from Gail. She was not satisfied with that. Franny's story is not going to end. She wants clarification. Is Franny going to end up with the inspector? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in the book, no. In the book, in the TV, yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'll take that. I'll take that answer. As long as I can watch the TV show and know they end up together, that's fine. Franny can continue with lovers aplenty, but <laughs> in the books. <laughs> fine. I agree. Yeah, excellent. Um, so when it's a, a typical writing day for you, what does that day look like? Do you have any little um, routines, music you put on, or special beverages? Coffee. There must be coffee. If I haven't got coffee, it doesn't work. I need <laughs> coffee. And I have a cat who sits there, just there, next to me, and she will. I'll be writing, 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 and she'll sit there and she'll gradually move around. Gradual little cat will move gently, gently, gently. Then she'll stop and hit the tree, and I will go and buy some more coffee. <laughs> and <laughs> there is a cat. That means I don't sit there for too long, but because my cat will just sit there until it's lunch time. And then I have to go and get some more cat foods and therefore I get some more coffee and then I have more a bit to do things and then I sit down and write again. It works very well. It means I don't lose my... She sits on the cat flop. Yeah, it? she does. <laughs> she hits only one. She, never, she doesn't fling the whole thing. She just hits one. And that's enough for me to write large letters and that means I do it. rather. So she, she's very careful. And she's she's very sweet. She's a sweet, darling girl. Uh, but her views, it, excuse me, there's munchies. I have munchies. And when I've got munchies, we've got coffee and wandering around and do these so that I don't I don't kill my fill my own hands. Yeah. Yeah. We um, need to yeah. So my last question, because I promised we would keep this short and sweet, although I could talk to you forever. Um, my last question is, do you have a favorite Franny Fisher book? I, I love all of them. I really do. I like the last one. I do I'll always love the one I've just finished because it's finished and it's done and it's all finished and I can say, here's the book. So I look like that. Yes. So when I write another one, I will find a space more than anything else again. So it seems to work, makes sense. It seems to make sense. It makes sense to me. And that's my perfect segue to say, for those of you watching, there is a brand new Franny Fisher book called Death in Dalesford. And we have copies available. There's a link in the comments if you'd like to order. Um, Carrie, this has made my month, year, spring, summer, all of it. I am, I was so, so, so appreciative that you agreed to sit down and talk with me tonight. Um, it's just really been a treat. And I, it's so good to see you again. It's been a long time. I saw you, I think, in um, Brighton or, no, Bristol. Bristol many years ago That's at a right. lot close to crime. 
Yeah, and I have I have a picture of us up on one of the Murder by the Book shelves, and I right over your section, and I look, that's the one I got to meet Carrie Greenwood. So this has been quite the treat for me, and I know it's been a treat for those watching. Thank you, darling. It's been lovely to see you. Likewise. I'm going to sign us off now. Have a wonderful, you're, it's morning for you there, right? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, well, have a wonderful day. I'm going to go uh, end my evening with some wine, and um, it's been just a delight. Thank you again. Lovely, darling. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Ha, <laughs>